it's in this context that we now get a war of Greeks fighting other Greeks. And this is kind of tricky, right? Because these folks wouldn't necessarily see themselves all the same. And in some ways, the Persian War is kind of like the Revolutionary War for our history, right? People that are different get each other's backs in the face of a common enemy. And then after a while, when that common enemy disappears, they start pointing out those little differences and fighting each other. And by 431, basically some allies of Sparta and some allies of Athens get into a little tip, and that embroils Sparta and Athens into a large-scale war. Um, it begins in 431, and really the what ends up going on is it's very lopsided. The Spartans have a great strong land force, a great army, um, with hoplites that invade the Attic Peninsula every year. But Athenians had those great walls that Pericles built, and they had um, a great set of triremes and a navy that they were able to raid the Peloponnesus by sea. Um, at the end of the first year, a huge plague that is probably very similar to the Black Death that hits Europe in the 1300s. Um, actually puts down a huge portion of the Athenians' population. And so I mentioned one of the sources that you have for class is what Thucydides says Pericles said in a speech given after the first year of the war while Athens is being wrecked by plague. And so this is known as Pericles' funeral oration. It's a really famous speech. Um, when Abraham Lincoln went to give his Gettysburg Address, he actually modeled it after Pericles' funeral oration. Um, what you might look at when you're in there is, what is it that Pericles says makes Athens superior to Sparta if Sparta really is better soldiers? What does Athens have to live for? And how does he try and manipulate people through speech to support his ideals? The end result of this war is that eventually Sparta wins. Um, Athens is, in terms of the empire, de de developed um, since the Delian League had started. Um, that empire is divided. Um, the members of the Delian League are allowed to go back and do their own thing. Uh, Pericles himself, kind of ironically, was ostracized and kicked out of Athens, giving um, opportunity for a bunch of tyrants to come to power. And in reality, what happens here is now... Athens and Sparta, which together had been so powerful over the course of really 20 years of war, wear each other down horribly. And although we aren't going to go there, you saw a little bit of this in the textbook. To the north, there's a new group of people who are doing pretty well and who have stayed out of a lot of this conflict. It's the Macedonians under first Philip II and then eventually his son Alexander. And all this infighting that's happened among the Greeks allows some folks that speak Greek and are kind of Greek, but are kind of like those cousins nobody wants to acknowledge, to come in, eventually conquer them, and then go on to conquer the Persian Empire and establish an even larger empire than the Persians had. That's outside the scope of this class. We aren't going to handle Alexander the Great, but it's kind of important to know where it goes from there.